down there somewhere. Hey everybody, and welcome to my little review for Homefront The Revolution. So, for this video I'm just going to be mainly going over, going over my sort of uh, opinions, what I thought worked for the game, what I thought didn't. And is it worth it still? Like, because I bought all the DLC together, it was on sale on the PlayStation Store. And I'll be also be playing like 10 minutes of this in the background whilst I talk. Right, so uh, why are we digging in here? What happened to evacuate? I have no idea where to start with this because it's kind of weird that I, I would say it well, it's basically not worth it, I'd say maybe at the start here because it gets real It's now. just underwhelming, which is all I can really say about it. You know, if I want if I if I had to choose a word to describe the whole game, it was underwhelming. They definitely improve upon it in the DLC, so the DLC is actually worth it, it's, it's good fun. Um, there's only like three pieces of it, uh, three pieces of DLC. The first two are not that long, they're only about 40 minutes, I think for my walkthroughs are a bit longer because I kept dying on them, so they are challenging and good fun. And the third one is definitely good fun, it's probably the most different of, uh, out of the entire game, it's probably the most like different piece and most memorable. But the boost, the, 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 as for the base game, it's very repetitive. It's not got much variation, which I mention quite a few times in my commentary. There's not much to be like, oh, this stands out. You know, this mission stands out, or that mission stands out. A lot of the game will just descend into you'll do one or two missions, kill a guy, or do a job for a guy. Then it's like the hearts and minds thing, which is the most unintuitive form of. The open world the mechanic, be like the open world mechanics you we'll see in the Ubisoft games that waiting. I've seen. It could be a lot better. I can't really say how. One of the things I did mention in the walkthrough is that they could have easily have had a mission where you're taking control of the friendly Goliath you have. That would have spiced up the game quite a bit. That would be nice. That would be a memorable mission. Instead, you end up escorting the Goliath. It's little things like that, where they could easily have done so much with the game, but just went with the easy route. It seems like, and that ultimately the game suffers for that. Also, at launch, this game was quite buggy. I remember at one point I climbed the top of a building. And actually almost fell off the side of the map. Luckily that didn't happen this time around. I think they have patched the game very well, so the game didn't crash at all when I played it. There was very few bugs and glitches, not nothing out of the ordinary for most AAA games. So in that respect they actually have made quite a lot of progress. If you find the game cheap enough, I, I know I did say it's not worth it at the start, but if you do find the game cheap enough online, I'd say grab it. Because it's... you might find it, you know, entertaining. Especially if it's, like, cheap. Like, if you pick it up in the Steam sales or the you know, PlayStation sales, yeah, by all means do pick it up. I can't really say much else about the game. I, it's it's just, this, like I said, underwhelming. It's for me anyway, personally. Like I did enjoy it, but it, it will, it's not like one of those games of like, oh yeah, I like that bit, I like that bit. Like they don't do. If I had to compare it to the first game, the the original Homefront, the original Homefront, you actually went on a bit of a journey. Uh, there were like different settings, different people you met, and so on. There was like a plot to follow. So you end up in, you start off in one of the cities, you go out into the countryside, fight some sort of hillbilly militia, meet the US Army, and... I'm trying to remember now how that, you take San Francisco, you take the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, there's like a, there's like a plot to follow. This game sort of suffers from not having that. There isn't like that, the, the sort of memorable settings or anything like that. The, get, the gunplay is a bit stiff. It's not that great. The upgrades are a bit repetitive. There's... Uh, so there's grenades, incendiary grenades, regular grenades, uh, hack grenades, which I don't understand how they, how they work, but whatever. And they all have the same sort of different 
different styles. So one has like an RC, they, they each have like an RC car, each is somehow taped to a teddy bear, and that's a proximity mine. Um, there's like a remote explosive, but there's no different upgrades then for any of them. They're all like the same three upgrades. The strongholds, so in the base game, this is the beyond this is the beginning to beyond the walls DLC. But in the base game there in the open world sections there are like stri strike points you can get and they're basically unlocked the map. Now the main problem with those are and most of the side stuff in this game is that you don't you actually see rush to do it. I got a warning, the KPA are coming. He was just here, I think. If the KPA come, we've got uh, okay. the flame don't know what that was. Um, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, so like you don't actually have to do any of the side stuff. It's kind of bizarre. I don't know uh, exactly why it was designed like that. But I got through the game. I had all the attachments, all of the gear, and quite a few of the. Up I, I managed to upgrade most of the guns. I got all the upgrades and variations of the guns. Not. So, I didn't. I didn't get all the upgrades and variations for like the grenades and whatnot because I didn't see the point. But I got pretty much everything from just doing the main game. So I didn't. There was no real need to do any of the side stuff. Which I found was a bit weird. Like why else would you? Why why? The only reason you would do them is to get the trophy, I suppose. I, I don't know why the game was designed that way. I also feel like they missed out on one or two other things as well. Like this game would have really benefited from a little like mini management game on the side where you have to maybe. Uh, so sort of like control teams then. So you send teams out to the world, have them. It kit them up, and you could probably spend the money from doing the side stuff on them, buying them better equipment, and sending them out on missions and like raids and blah blah blah, and bring you back resources like that. Little that little sort of game you find in Assassin's Creed games sometimes would have fitted into this game rather well. And I don't think it would have been that hard to sort of add that mechanic to this game. You could have just put a little. It's basically like a, a menu, more or less, with like different. Tick, tick, tick boxes and so on, or like a map, you just send people out. Yeah, that would have been nice, that would have been different, that would have added something to the game, a get different mechanic to think about. But as it stands, the game is very basic, it's very compact, there's nothing really there to sort of be like, oh, okay, yeah, that, well, well, that's great, I enjoyed, like, that, that's a good mechanic, or that adds to the game. So. Yeah, one of the nice things, though, I will say about the game is the uprising parts really worked. Even though they were repetitive. Like, not the actual act of doing them. So the act of doing them is very repetitive, so you have to, like, kill officials or free prisoners, blah blah blah. All that stuff is repetitive. But the actual change you see in the world is quite, uh, it's quite a nice touch. So as the percentage of the hearts and minds goes higher and higher, you see more um, more people rioting, more uh, KPA like riot guard, riot soldiers on the streets, and more announcements being made over like the announcement system. And you know, there's like a visual change in the world, which is quite nice. So I'm glad to see that they they thought about that at least before they uh, did anything. I don't care what Pear says. I'm trying to think now. Yeah, I'm also trying to play the game as well. I'm trying to like show you a bit of the game, but I'm I have my I need to I had to mute my headset. Oh. Is he glitched? Or did he speak? So I have my, I have my headset volume now. Oh no, I think he's glitched. We'll to disperse. Oh, there you go. Everyone in different directions set up yeah, so there are a few glitches in the game still. Just, uh, just a heads up. And there are a few areas as well where you can sort of like jump and get stuck. So that happened to me once or twice. But, yeah, I mean, I've, I've sort of just uh, blathered on here for like 10 minutes about random shit. But, yeah, it's, it's all stuff that, you know, to be aware of before you buy the game. Like it's, it's also got a decent length to it. I think I took about 10 hours Any chance you get, this game. And that's without doing any of the side stuff. So if you're a completionist, it'll probably take about 30 hours. So that's like 30 hours of content. Whether or not 
as we've discussed before, you enjoy it is another thing. But I'm probably good at it road. I, I mean, I can't really say it's not worth it. I can't say it is worth it because it, again, it's one of those games. I can't really be like, oh, okay, hundred, like a good percentage of people will enjoy it. There are there will be things you like. There will be things you don't like. So. Just, I'd say, just look through my walkthrough the first maybe hour or two if you're considering Paris buying the game. Plan to get out of here. And Parish's orders are to just dig in. We make our stand yeah, here in Philly. There, because what's in the first two hours of the game is basically how the game unfolds. It's, it's nothing new pops up. So if you like that, you're probably going to enjoy it. It's just and most. Most of the time now, when the game's on offer, it comes with the DLC, and the DLC is definitely worth playing. Like if you played the base game, definitely try out the DLC because the DLC is much more heavy, like, you know, much more mixed up, and much more interesting. It's not as sort of repetitive as the first game, as the, as the base game. But yes, that's pretty much what I would say. I can't really recommend it, not recommend it. Or my personal rating is I enjoyed it. But I can't really recommend it, <laughs> I suppose. But yeah, I don't want to sort of. It's weird because I'm, I'm sort of like up and down on it. I can't really confirm. Like, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, you know, just randomly to people. Like, I wouldn't be like, you know, yeah, yeah, if you like. I'd say if you like this type of game, then you probably like this. Like, I wouldn't just say, yeah, you should definitely try this out. Yeah. I mean, this game is a lot harder to review than I was expecting. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, if you like what you see in the walkthrough in the first two parts of the walkthrough, really you'll like the entire game. That's all I can say. Anyway, I have dribbled on for enough, and thank you all for watching this. If you've gotten to this, if you've if you've gotten past this weird verbal uh, drivel that I have basically been spouting for the last ten minutes, then God bless you. And I hope you're a bit more aware of the game. The game is about ten years old, ten years old, five years old now. And I will say it, in terms of like graphically as well, the game works a lot better than it did at launch. It, it I think it's roughly at, at launch they had a tr they had trouble achieving the 30 frames per second in terms when like there was like gunfires and explosions happening on screen, but. One of the updates actually fixed that, so I think generally now it hits that 30 frames per second. And I've been, I've been playing it on PS5, so I assume that it might give it a bit of a boost. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Really is all I to say. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've gotten to this point, then God bless you, because I have said I, I've just been droning on for the last 10 minutes. But if there are any games you'd like me to try out next or add to my list, then by all means throw that in the comments. If there's anything you think I have this missed out of this little review of mine, then What's by the all situation? means throw that in the comments Over. as well, and I will be happy to discuss it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. One thing I didn't didn't mention in this video was plot, actually, and the plot is more or less um, in general threads a repeat of the first game, so you overthrow the, t the Korea, uh, the KPA, and um, some outside force comes in and liberates America. So in the first game, in the base game, in the first game that came out on PS3, it was um, only half America was conquered. Uh, the, r the Mississippi was radiated, it was irradiated, and everything south of the Mississippi was basically still America. And if I recall, the American army reinvades North America, I think, and yeah, the, the resistance sort of helps them in this, it ends up being NATO, that ultimately comes in on one of the DLCs, in the Beyond the Walls DLC. Spoilers for a game that came out five years ago, but yeah, it's, it's basically them, so the plot is more or less the same, so if you've played... Uh, if you've played the original game, you, you, a lot of this will seem familiar to you. Right, so I have driveled on enough, like I've said, and I will leave you all get on with your day. But I hope this video has been a little bit helpful, you know, has been of little help to you, at least, and has given you an idea of what the game's like. 
And if you've enjoyed the game, whether or not you hated the game or you're indifferent, by all means, if you were excited and disappointed, etc., your feelings in the game in general, by all means, throw them in the comments as well. And if you could leave a like, that would be greatly appreciated because that does help, and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date. As for now, though, that's pretty much it. So I look forward to seeing you all next time. No idea what my next walkthrough will be, or if it'll have commentary, but regardless, I will see you then. For now, though, look after yourselves and take care. Thanks for watching.